Hello everyone, my name is Trevor Ursulescu and I am the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Today I will review Lindbergh's 132nd scale 1940 Ford convertible. This is kit number 72140. This model is a skill level 2 kit. That means that you will need paint and glue to put it together. In 1940, the German army was advancing through Europe. However, America was not fully involved yet. Domestic car manufacturing was in full swing and it wasn't until 1943 that the automotive factories switched to wartime production. New car styling was the rage at Ford Motor Company in 1940 when Edsel Ford brought European influences to the design of his new cars. The Deluxe 85 Series Convertible, represented in this model kit, were attractive cars with headlights integrated into the fenders, a pointed hood and a classic chrome grille featuring horizontal bars which swept back toward the cabin. The fenders flowed well with the belt line and sloping rear deck. The raked windshield gave it a fast look. Is it any wonder that many of these cars ended up as World War II staff cars for the United States Army? Looking at the box on this new edition, the two called out features of this kit are the detailed chassis and the detailed wheels. This is rather unusual because this model includes many other detailed items that would make a good selling feature like the accurate dashboard, the outstanding grill detail, and the excellent undercarriage. All pieces total 31. The box recommends that you should be 10 years old to build this kit. I do believe, however, that an apt 8-year-old could build this model with adult supervision. This is what you will see when you open the box. The parts are wrapped in a plastic bag. Instructions and glass are underneath. These are all the parts of the model. Unfortunately, there are no chrome-plated parts, but you could always paint those pieces silver or use a chrome product like Elclad or bare metal foil. The beautifully illustrated instructions are easy to follow because they show an exploded parts view of the assembly steps with well-written directions. Across the top of the instructions are warnings in English, French, Japanese, German, Spanish, Italian, and Dutch. It also includes the Ford official licensing logo. There are a few things to look out for in this kit that will provide a challenge to builders. This is not intentional on Lindbergh's behalf, but is reflective of the model's history. Originally, this kit was produced by Palmer in 1960. In those days, the plastic car modeling technique was still new and many companies did not know how to make a one-piece model. Therefore, what you got in the kit was a multi-piece body that you had to glue together. The advantage was that they could make a detailed interior panel on the inside of the body, but the disadvantage was that they also put the part number there and some mold marks. Secondly, the model is plagued with depressed mold marks and flash, or thin excess plastic that was squeezed between tiny gaps in the two-part mold process. Flash and raised mold marks are easily removed with your hobby knives and sandpaper. Depressed mold marks, however, can be filled in with model filler and sanded from the top down. It requires more effort on behalf of the builder, but the end result will look fantastic. Take your time. Finally, the model has a few areas where the sprue tree touches apart with a thick peg. In order to remove the kit part from the sprue without destroying the model, you will have to cut the sprue away from the part and file or carve the sprue attachment point down to the shape of the piece. Despite these engineering hiccups, this kit does include some excellent part detail. Have a look at the front axle assembly. It's similar to an old AMT 125th scale 1940 Ford. To show you how well this kit goes together, here is a model I built from the 1979 issue back in 1985 when I was a young boy. I didn't know then what I know today about building models, but the construction of my younger years still looks good today. A flat black paint wash really brings out the grill detail. And look at how small the car is. It fits right in the palm of your hand. If you collect 132nd scale models, want a quick build World War II era staff car for an army diorama, or are looking for a good first time model kit, then I recommend Lindbergh's 1944 convertible to you.